The moon is the eighth continent of the Earth really affords us an opportunity to better understand our place in the solar system. So I actually, I'm one of the meteorologists here at WFAA. We were just talking about the uh, the total lunar eclipse this morning, and I, I already explained why we see a, a reddish hue uh, mm -hmm. to the moon. Uh, so tell me, how often do total lunar eclipses happen? Okay, yeah. So in, in general, we get about two a year, but that doesn't mean we can see them from our backyard every year. And so it depends on, you have to be in the right hemisphere, the right place and time, and it doesn't mean you get to see the entirety of the eclipse. And so uh, we won't have another eclipse like this one where the entirety of the country sees it until 2048. So while they're not extremely rare on a global scale, events like this where as a country, as a continent, we can watch it together, uh, it is a pretty special occasion. Well, that is so neat. How, what a rare treat too. I think that we have some uh, pretty good viewing conditions for tonight. Uh, so that'll be uh, awesome. Uh, do we need any special equipment to view the total lunar eclipse or, or in what times are the most ideal to watch? Yeah, fortunately, unlike a, a solar eclipse, lunar eclipses require no special equipment. As I like to say, clear eyes and clear skies. That's all that's needed. A uh, clear view of the sky away from bright lights just to be able to enjoy uh, the, the full uh, experience of the eclipse. You know, like the song says, right? The stars are bright each day and night. Well, the moon will be bright tonight. And so you want to be in a place where you can you know, see the sky pretty clearly away from trees, tall buildings. Uh, for you, it will start, the totality will, will really kick in, around, uh, the beginning of totality starts around uh, uh, just after midnight. Totality starts at 126 to 130 in the morning. And for about an hour and a half, you get this uh, real treat of seeing the moon change color before your very eyes. That is so cool. And I think that it's just something so neat about it happening on Pi Day. Uh, yes. For those of you that don't know, Pi is a 3.14. It's a mathematical constant. Uh, how do uh, you use Pi to kind of determine when the next lunar eclipse is going to happen? So this is, this is why your math teacher said this will be important because you'll use it in the future. And so we use Pi to calculate area of Earth's shadow, the area of the moon. And so by basically calculating when the area of the, the moon passes into the cone of the Earth's shadow, we can use that constant. We can use geometry and trigonometry to calculate the duration of totality, when these will happen. Um, and so, again, like your math teacher told you, this is why we, we study math and this is how we apply it uh, to the heavens. Yeah, we use it a lot in meteorology too. So, <laughs> so it was kind of a fun nerdy moment when when we made the realization that it was happening on Pi Day. Um, so NASA has uh, a mission right now that's orbiting the moon and uh, taking some detailed images. And this has been going on for you know over ten years now. So, what are some of your favorite parts uh, of really studying this over the last decade or so? Yeah, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter spacecraft has, has really taken the moon into the 21st century. By mapping the moon in exquisite detail for over 15 years now, we're able to put the moon into really four dimensions. We've mapped the surface, we've mapped its topography, and now we're watching the moon change underneath our feet. We're using our data to understand the history and evolution of the moon from its formation four and a half billion years ago to processes, things that are happening on the moon today. We have a suite of instruments that are characterizing the moon and its environment. And we use that not only for scientific studies, but also to prepare for this next era of lunar exploration with both robotic explorers and humans. Oh, that sounds so exciting. What are you most excited about with this new era? Really, it's two things. One is unlocking mysteries, right? There, there are so many things that we don't know about the history of the moon. And we study the moon to understand the distant past of our solar system. There are parts of the moon that are older than any rocks on the surface of the Earth. So we use those rocks to understand what was going on four and a half billion years ago. We're also learning about processes that happen today. We have this wonderful atmosphere. The atmosphere that gives that moon the red color also protects the earth from impacts, from small craters forming on its surface. We can see those things happening on the lunar surface. So the moon is the eighth continent of the earth really affords us an opportunity to better understand our place in the solar system. And then we use that to explore and prepare our future uh, explorers.
And nothing like a total lunar eclipse to get young minds excited about uh, space and all of the fun science going on with researching the moon. Thank you so much for joining us today. It, it was it was fun to to catch up and and learn something new. Thank you for having me.